we're in different universes here. <laughs> we're there in the multiverse of madness over there in the United States. And we're like, I don't know, in the WandaVision <laughs> universe, the happy universe over there. Hi everyone, what is up? My name is Haley. Welcome to my YouTube channel. If you did not know, now you do. Hey you guys, what's up? So in today's video, y'all, actually before I get into the video, I wanna say first and foremost, hello to everyone that is new to my channel. I wanna say thank you to everyone that has left me a positive comment. As you can probably tell, I'm relatively sick or I have like a little cold, I'm not relatively sick. I have a little cold. And so if I sound a little congested or I'm a little slow today, that's the reason why. So yeah, in today's video, y'all, I'm gonna be talking about my first ever visit to a German doctor. How I'm gonna start this video is with a little back story or back information or knowledge regarding the United States insurance system. A lot of people actually don't know this, like German people, I feel like Americans do know this, but Germans probably don't. And the reason I'm including this is because I think it's very important for my mindset of when I got to Germany. But in the United States, how health insurance works, for the most part, there are a few exceptions to the rule. When you are or up until 26, you usually stay under your parents' health care or health insurance um, plan. After 26, you get kicked out and you gotta find your own. Like I said, exceptions to the rule. I know in some places, if you are disabled, you can stay under your parents' plan for as long as you want. Or if you are in Florida, I think it's up to 30 with no dependents. If you are in school, I think some states allow you to stay a little bit longer. So with that being said, my mother was responsible for my health care slash health insurance. And I'll sprinkle in my grandma in there as well. They were responsible for the bills. They were responsible for the fees. They were responsible for my medicine even though you know I was sometimes upwards of 18 plus years old. I'm not saying that it's okay, it's just a totally different system than in Germany. Fast forward, like I said, 2015, I got here at the beginning of the year. I did not go to the doctor until the end of 2015, beginning of 2016. I was working in a kindergarten and a daycare and I was surrounded by kids. So it was inevitable that I was going to get sick and it was getting progressively worse. The lady that I worked for, she was like, did you go to the doctor? And I didn't have like, I would say I was more embarrassed to tell her that A, I didn't have money to pay for a copay or to pay for prescriptions and that my mom did everything for me prior to me coming to Germany because our insurance systems are sort of different. I wish I would have been more transparent with them because then they could have, how do you say, nip this in the bud ASAP. But here I am and there I was. So I think fast forward a week after going back and forth and them asking if I went to the doctor, if I plan on going to the doctor, the lady came to me with a little paper that had an appointment on it and she said, here's an appointment for tomorrow at like 10 a.m. Let's say you have to go because you're getting worse and please, you know, just go and see what they say and get checked out. I was a little, how do you say, hesitant and also very scared, but I was also relieved that she did it because I knew that I needed to get better. So I get to the doctor's office and it was very straightforward and very similar to the United States and the way that the system works. So you go in and in Germany, you give them your insurance card, they stick it in like this little, I don't know, this card reader and it takes all of your information and then they give you this paper that ask all of the information that doctors usually ask you. So I filled out the form, I turned it into her, I sat back down and then the doctor's assistant or the nurse came and picked me up and said, can you go into this room with me? She checked, you know, my vitals and everything and asked me what was wrong so she could tell the doctor or give her like a little briefing. Then the doctor came in and what she told me was that I needed certain like antibiotics and drugs. I needed to maybe take a week or two off of work. I needed to rest. Um, and what else did she say? She said something else. I need to come back in two weeks to make sure that everything worked the way that it was supposed to. And all I saw, honestly, in my head was like ka-ching, 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 money signs everywhere. And so after all that, she says, go to the front desk and the lady there can help me. So it's very much so the same in the United States. You know, you go to the front desk, you say, hey, I have a new appointment or I need a new appointment. They schedule you a new appointment. They give you your prescriptions. They give you all of this stuff. And then she just like said, bye. And I'm just standing there like, and she's like, do you need help? Or do you need something? Did I forget something? And I'm like, no. And I'm asking her in German, 
how much does this cost? And she's looking very confused and very perplexed. And she's like, what do you mean? And I'm like, well, my doctor's visit. She knew I was a foreigner, but I think then she like knew I was from the United States after I was like very confused. And she was like, you know what? In Germany, as long as you have this insurance card, everything will go relatively smooth or smoothly for you. You don't have to worry about co-pays. You usually won't have a copay, And if you do have to pay something for a doctor's visit, it will be discussed prior like to the end or prior with your doctor. And you both will have to come to an agreement and it'll be like something that you are very much so aware of. And I was like, so I don't know you any money right now and she's like not a single dollar and I'm like I'm not gonna get a bill she's like no and so I left you guys I said bye <laughs> I thought I was doing something illegal I went to the pharmacy same thing I gave lady my prescription she's like oh my gosh we don't have this and I thought they were gonna do what they do in the United States where they say yeah we're out of this but we can offer you this type of drug that isn't covered by your insurance or you can pay a little bit more and it's gonna be a hundred bucks more <laughs> to get it I thought they were gonna do that in Germany and she was like oh no we'll just order it and it'll either come tonight hopefully it'll be here if not it'll be here the next morning morning and then she's like you just have to pay 10 bucks for your prescriptions and I was like that's it I mean it's pretty boring when you think of it <laughs> when you don't make it complex and complicated like I did then it's a very easy efficient and streamlined process <laughs> Now, moving on to me going to the doctor's office in the United States without insurance, which they are sort of a little unfair, but I do have to say, even if I had insurance in the United States, I would still pay a crap ton of money for the things that I had done. And also people will say that if you have good insurance in the United States, that you won't have to pay co-pays, you won't have to pay, you know, a share of anything and your insurance will pay everything. I don't know anyone like that. I'm like trying to think on the top of my head, not a single person. And so going to the doctor's office in the United States, I went to urgent care when I was in the United States, you guys. And I went to the hospital, as you guys know, in 2019, and it was a, oh, it was an experience. It was an expensive experience, an expensive mistake as well. I thought to myself, Haley, go to urgent care. It's supposed to be a more affordable alternative. I wouldn't say substitute for the emergency room, but for for medical care. They're supposed to offer very, I would say limited and basic services and tests in the United States for patients compared to an emergency room, but they do, I would say, do a lot of stuff. But they have a fixed price usually that ranges anywhere from like, I would say 100 to $250 like for your visit. So the doctor comes in, she takes the little thing that literally is making your reflexes on your knee go. I don't know what that thing is called, that little thing that they hit. She's like pushing on my stomach. She takes her little steth stethoscope to here. She's like, open your mouth. She's looking in my ear, you know, doing very basic <laughs> things. And then she literally, I think that took five minutes max. She said, well, you know, you're not pregnant. And then the tests that we ran, there's like nothing that's popping up. So the thing I can recommend for you is to go to the emergency room. After she told me this, I thought to myself, hey, I've only been here max 10 minutes, not even 10 minutes, nine minutes and 45 seconds. I thought to myself, since they have basically told me they don't know what's going on and they can't help me and there's nothing they can do, they will charge me a fraction of the price or they won't charge me at all because if that was me and I worked in the medical field and someone came to me with an issue and then all I said was go to another doctor to see what's wrong I wouldn't charge them anything but that's just <laughs> I guess who I am as a person I couldn't be a doctor in the United States because I would be helping everybody for free I get the bill and it was two hundred dollars and some change the next um, instance that I went to the doctor, the emergency room in the United States. As you guys know, 2019, I got sick and ugh, four or five different doctors kept coming to me. Like one came, they're like, oh, we don't know what this is. The other one came, we don't know what this is. The other one came, oh, we don't know what this is. Let's run this test. Let's do this test. Let's do that test. And I'm like, 
okay, but what's wrong? And nobody could tell me what was wrong. And so after a few hours of being there and them saying that they have no idea what's going on, they're like, we're gonna transfer you into a room in the hospital, like upstairs. And as I'm in the elevator, I was thinking to myself, this is going to be very expensive. And after being here for like hours, they still haven't been able to tell me what is happening. And so I talked to the doctor, like the main doctor that was in charge, and I was like, hey, um, I just want to know if I can go home because this is getting very expensive. And he was like, I mean, if, yeah, he's like, I wouldn't recommend it, but if you're feeling okay to like walk to the car and go home, my mom was with me, she drove me home, perfectly fine. He said, the only thing that I please ask you to do is come to my private, like practice my private office and let me like, look at you and everything. So I leave and I get a wonderful bill from the hospital <laughs> for, I wanna say less than 12 hours in the ER emergency room. I got charged, I think 15,000 for everything that happened. And then they tried to charge me 2000 for transferring me upstairs. I think I was in the upstairs room for five minutes max. I got there after talking to the doctor, put on my clothes and left. They charged me 2000 something dollars for that. $17,000 I think after all was said and done. Could have been a little bit more, could have been a little bit less. So then fast forward, I think like two days later, I went to this doctor's office. And actually something I forgot to mention is that he gave me a referral to get an x-ray done before I went to his practice. And funny enough, the x-ray was the most affordable thing that I got done <laughs> out of everything that I'm talking about in this video. And I went to this little, I would say third party um, building or organization that offered x x-rays for people and I think it was like 27 bucks. They took the referral, they took the x-ray, sent it to the doctor. It was already at his office when I went um, for my first visit with him. He saw the x-ray and he saw that I had pneumonia. So what he did was he gave me antibiotics, he gave me something else that I had to take. And he also told me to get some probiotics from the grocery store. And he also told me to come in two weeks for a checkup. And that visit I think cost me 700 something dollars. I think it was like 780, close to 800. I went back for my two week checkup and he just basically looked to see that everything was fine. I, like I said, haven't been going to any healthcare professionals in the United States for a very long time. So for me, I just don't know what it's like and it's all new for me as well. And I thought when he was checking me like out to make sure everything was fine and he like put his little stethoscope on my back to hear my breathing and stuff and he said, oh, you're okay. And that was like a five minute max um, appointment, I thought, that I was seriously only gonna have to pay like 20 bucks. I spent more time filling out the form that he gave me than I actually did with him. And even with the nurse or the nurse practitioner that worked at his office as well. But I was, how do you say, <laughs> pleasantly? Not pleasant, it wasn't pleasant. I was surprised when I got the bill for like another $575 to see this man for literally five minutes. And I'm like, that is a hundred something dollars per minute. And I'm like, <laughs> why how this is not possible and the thing is i know that when you go to let's say the doctor in germany and you don't have insurance they raise the prices and they charge a little more but they don't charge nothing like this <laughs> nothing like in the united states the craziest thing of it all though is that i could have flown from miami to munich first class <laughs> round trip back and forth, you know, going to each of these places, get dropped off in Germany the next day, take an ambulance from the um, airport to the hospital, stay in the hospital for three weeks in Germany and still pay less money than spending 12 hours in the emergency room in the United States. I. Uh, <laughs> But yeah, I'm not gonna get into the ranting portion of this, you guys. I just wanted to give you some hard numbers and what my experiences were like. I think the most expensive bill that I ever got was when I stayed in the hospital for a few days. I, I don't remember if it was like 70 bucks this time or 80 bucks this time for staying in the hospital for a week. That was my bill. And also I think I paid $3 a day for Wi-Fi access in the hospital. <laughs> so um, I paid, let's see, 
20, 7, 14, 21, 7, 7, 14, 21, 21 plus 70, let's say $91 for a one week visit in the hospital in Germany because I had to pay for my Wi-Fi. And that's including all of the tests that they ran on me, all of the food I received, all of the care I received. And yeah, just an interesting um, difference. You know, we're in different universes here. <laughs> we're there in the multiverse of madness over there in the United States. And we're like, I don't know, in the WandaVision <laughs> universe, the happy universe over there. But yeah, thank you so much for watching you guys. I love y'all. Have a wonderful day and bye.